This is insane. Here's an image of Booster 11 after its final soft water landing following Starship's fourth flight. It's important to uncover everything that happened to the booster during the landing. So what's SpaceX going to do next with the B-11 shattered hardware? How did Elon react? In the past few days, the appearance of the 260-foot HOS Ridgewind service vessel off the coast of Boca Chica has garnered significant attention. This ship, equipped with a giant crane, has been hovering near the area where SpaceX's Starship booster sank into the Gulf of Mexico June 6th. The presence of the 260-foot Ridgewind has sparked speculation that Elon's commercial space company is recovering the 230-foot steel booster that hit the water, toppled over, and then sank. And yesterday, that's no longer speculation, as Elon himself posted a close-up photo of the shattered remains of Super Heavy's B-11 booster. Starship Super Heavy Booster Flight 4, it said. Known as Super Heavy Booster 11, its massive fuel tank and 33 engines sent a Starship upper stage into space during its fourth test flight back in June. This was the booster that did not explode before landing. Shortly after the flight, SpaceX said they have no plans to recover the spacecraft, but clearly the company or some other entity, maybe a wealthy collector, has had a change of heart about leaving the high-tech rocket parts out at sea. Take a closer look. The image truly gives off Star Destroyer wreckage vibes, like the ruins of a futuristic long-dead civilization, as Elon described it. We can no longer see the fuel tank or the 13 inner engines of the Super Heavy. All that remains are the 14 outermost Raptor 2 engines and the frame attached. This is likely the sturdiest part that connects the engines to the fuel tank. However, it's unclear whether the disintegration was due to the direct landing in the water or an explosion after B-11 hit the water as predicted by an image of a fire spotted by a space engineer. Saying it broke apart from the impact with the water isn't wrong as the super heavy rocket tipped in one direction upon landing and the pressure from the weight and the rocket's heat caused the part that made contact with the water first to crumble. But saying it exploded also makes some sense as just before B-11 neared the water we saw a fire underneath the engines, particularly towards the outer ring of the engines. That would also explain why only half the engine stayed intact. What do you think caused such severe destruction of Super Heavy's B-11? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Recovering the parts of B-11 would give SpaceX an advantage in studying what happened to the remaining components, which would help prepare for the upcoming fifth flight when SpaceX aims to land Super Heavy once again and possibly catch it when it comes down with Mechazilla. This rocket still has much room for improvement, as Elon tweeted. Fixer upper. It shows that although Starship may not be perfect yet, it's a work in progress with immense potential. Now, with more than two months left before getting the FAA license at the end of November, we believe this time frame is sufficient for SpaceX to learn many lessons. It's undeniable that SpaceX is likely to introduce some changes to Super Heavy B-12. The idea of retrieving old rockets from the ocean is not new. In 2021, HOS Briarwood, a ship similar to the one currently 15 miles off Boca Chica Beach, helped SpaceX recover parts of Falcon 9's rocket off the coast of Florida. Further back, NASA recovered nearly half the Challenger after the explosion in 86, in which seven astronauts lost their lives. In 2013, Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon and founder of Blue Origin, led an expedition to collect the charred mechanical parts from the Saturn V rocket that carried Apollo astronauts to the moon in the late 60s and 70s. Some artifacts are on display in the Seattle Museum of Flight and the National Air and Space Museum in D.C. This suggests that not only has the tail section of the B-11 been recovered, but SpaceX is likely continuing to look for more. The excitement is building, and we can't wait for what's next. While the excitement from recovering the rocket offshore still lingers, SpaceX continues ramping up its operations at Starbase on land. Previously, we speculated Flight 6 might take off before Flight 5 based on Elon's tweets, but just the day after the 20th of September, B-12, part of Flight 5, along with its hot staging section, was moved to the launch site. Once there, it was immediately secured using the chopsticks, and on the morning of the 20th, it was placed on the Orbital Launch Mount, or OLM. Notably, the lifting of Booster 12 was done in a special manner. Typically, we only see the chopsticks lift super heavy and put it on the OLM, but this time SpaceX lifted it all the way to the top of the tower before lowering it. This is the first time super heavy hit such a height, and it's almost certain that the rocket will be caught at that height. Just as SpaceX tweeted, Starbase Tower lifts the super heavy booster for Flight 5 to expected catch height. Accompanying the tweet were stunning images, the likes of which we haven't seen in some time. Upon closer inspection, it's clear that the interstage booster ring is missing from the top is super heavy, which is not surprising as the Starship launch profile involves SpaceX discarding the booster ring into the ocean before the rocket does a soft landing. This ring was a late add-on to Starship's design and one of the first upgrades after Flight 1 last year, which ended with the Starship's first and second stages failing to separate. 
After B-12 got put on the OLM, the hot staging section was added. By the end of September 21st, Ship 30 was transposed to the launch pad at Starbase. SpaceX announced the event on social media, emphasizing its importance. Ship 30 had undergone static fire tests and had an upgraded heat shield. The spacecraft's fully equipped with Raptor engines, promising improved navigation, deceleration, and landing capabilities compared to previous versions. With both B-12 and Ship 30 now at the launch pad, we could soon witness the first fully integrated prototype stack. Normally, the next step be a wet dress rehearsal, a critical pre-launch test. However, given the current situation and the FAA's review process, the timeline could be delayed. Elon has hinted that these activities might be to demonstrate SpaceX's readiness to the FAA. In addition to SpaceX's own efforts, more and more congressional efforts are coming forward to support SpaceX, urging the FAA to expedite the approval process for Starship flights. These include Congressman Kevin Kiley of California and Keith Self, a congressman of Texas, and even Donald Trump. Starship must be launched, and the U.S. needs to return to the moon before China does. This is no idle time for SpaceX or NASA, especially when NASA's Artemis lunar program is facing issues with its contractor Axiom. A detailed report reveals Axiom Space is facing financial challenges. Sources indicate that the company struggling to make payroll has fallen behind on payments to contractors, including SpaceX, and started downsizing operations. This comes at a time when external funding is becoming increasingly scarce. Last month, Axiom's longtime CEO and co-founder, Mike Suffredini, abruptly stepped down, citing personal reasons. He transitioned to an advisory role and will remain on the board. A new report suggests that Suffredini built Axiom into a mini-NASA-like entity, burdened with unnecessary costs. The company is now facing financial strain, with delays and downsizing threatening the viability of its space station projects. The report states, Axiom found itself struggling to make payroll, which reached $10 million a month by early last year, according to an internal document, and it fell behind on payments to suppliers. Axiom's primary goal was to build a commercial low-Earth orbit space station by leveraging NASA's ISS. The station would consist of several modules for crew quarters, power research, and manufacturing. Once fully assembled, it would detach and become an independent free-flying station. However, building and managing a space station takes time and expertise. In the interim, Axiom launched private astronaut missions to the ISS, targeting billionaires and wealthy nations. The company also secured funding from NASA to develop an EVA suit for Artemis' lunar missions. NASA awarded Axiom hundreds of millions of dollars to start suit development, selecting the company alongside Collins Airspace, which has since dropped out, leaving Axiom as the sole competitor. These initiatives will require billions to develop, but NASA has only provided a fraction of the necessary funds. Additionally, Axiom's private astronaut missions have operated at a loss. A former exec noted, there aren't many billionaires willing to spend 18 months training to become an astronaut for the ISS. To make matters worse, NASA mandates that a former NASA astronaut command each private mission, reducing Axiom's revenue from each mission by approximately 25%. The company expects its next mission in early 2025 to break even. On a more positive note, Axiom's spacesuit program is reportedly in better shape thanks to steady NASA funding and a strong chance of becoming the sole provider unless SpaceX steps in. Despite raising half a billion dollars in a recent funding round, Axiom's financial situation stays precarious. As soon as the money comes in, it went straight to paying SpaceX and other bills. Then it was gone, a former exec told Forbes. Under interim CEO and co-founder Kim Gaffarian, the company has implemented layoffs, a voluntary 20% pay cut for employees, and talks about scaling back its space station plans. With continued delays to Axiom's station's first launch and the ISS set to retire by the end of the decade, any reduction in scope puts Axiom's core mission at risk. If the company's primary goal of building an LEO station falters, its future becomes uncertain. A potential lifeline could come from a NASA contract to provide a replacement for the ISS, but Axiom faces stiff competition from companies like Vast, Blue Origin, Sierra Space, and even SpaceX with Starship. Whatever the outcome, Axiom faces a tough road ahead to turn its business model into a commercial success. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.